Hello and welcome to another Trailblazer progress video. In the last video, I managed to get 99 smithing knocked out of the way, as well as all of the diaries I should realistically be able to complete by the time I max, which is effectively when I'm going to be done with the League anyway. As of today, it is December 16th, 2020. It's about 8 days before Christmas, which is notable because I leave on vacation the day after Christmas, so I only got about 8 days left to accomplish my goal of maxing. So I want this to be the episode where I achieve the max cape. There is quite a bit left to do, a good number of hours, but none of the methods are anything that you haven't already seen. There won't be a lot to record anyway, so I figured this would be a good candidate to just grind it all out and get that max cape done. So without further ado, let's go through the remaining skills I have and talk about how long it should take to achieve each. Ranging will be really quick. I'll use the same method I did with Melee at the Maniacal Monkeys, and I should be able to get that within about two hours, maybe even less. Prayer's a tricky one. I didn't get a chance to do as much of it through Achievement Diaries as I would have liked, so it means I do have to kill more Green Dragons in the Mist Guild to collect bones, but that should be very fast. I also have a good number of Dagonus bones that should provide a nice boost to that as well. I'm thinking I probably have about eight to 10 hours left there. Rune crafting, very straightforward, using the lava runes at the uh, earth altar. I think I have another eight to 10 hours there as well. Construction already banked incredibly fast. I'm thinking no more than two hours there. Agility, I'm hoping the agility arena ticket goal I have will get me all the way up to 99 and it should. It should be a huge boost of experience, but I've only got just over 300 tickets. So including the 10% bonus from the Karamja Elite Diary, I've got exactly 10 hours left there. Herb lore should be pretty quick, though I think I am still a little short on herbs. I've got my uh, kingdom going full on herbs now, so hopefully that should provide me the boost I need to get all the way to 99. So I'm thinking I probably have about four to five hours left there. And fletching I should accomplish basically zero time while doing the agility goal. I've got all the broad arrows banked, so no time there. Hunter is basically 99. I didn't get a chance to do any herbivore and I don't think I will, but I will get that through the next couple birdhouse runs. Very straightforward and easy. Finally, fire making. It's about four million experience an hour with U logs. I've got at least an hour's worth of U logs left and then it'll be on to maples. So I think only two to three hours there and that should be done as well. So all that added up, I've got about 40 to 45 hours left of grinding to accomplish within these eight days. I think that should be achievable, though a lot of it's going to have to be done away from my computer on my phone, which uh, some of these things should be doable through that method, so it shouldn't be too bad. Unfortunately, pretty much nothing I have left is AFK, so I can't really fill my AFK time with anything super useful in regards to maxing. However, I still am almost to 25 million mining experience and 25 million woodcutting experience. More U logs would help with fire making, making a little faster, and I also need a little bit more Puritans for Nanan Rune Crafting anyway, so I will hopefully also be getting those during the time I can't do any active play anyway. But that all said, time to stop stalling and go ahead and jump in. I'm feeling agility and fletching right away. Don't know if I'll go straight to 99 fletching, but I do want to see how far I can get on the ticket goal uh, doing the uh, fletching goal. So let's go ahead. So back here again, I've got my headless arrows and arrowheads ready to be made. It's not as easy to do these while running around as it is with alking, so I'll mostly be doing them while I'm waiting for the ticket to change position, so there'll be a little bit less downtime for it, but still quite a bit, honestly. Also, check out my gear. I've got like 50 prayer bonus, so I can use rapid heal for an hour and 15 minutes almost without even take a sip of prayer to propotion, so I'll be here for a while. I do have the backup food though, because I do still occasionally need to take a bite. So that's 80 fletching, which is actually base 80s, which is I think the first elite task for base levels. So pretty notable there. So with this last birdhouse, that is 99 hunter, and I am done with birdhouse runs. Annoyingly, even though I did birdhouse runs pretty much from 1 to 99 hunter, I didn't get a single dragon fruit tree seed. I got one redwood tree seed, no dragon fruit tree seeds, so I can't do that task. The only option for me going forward would be getting lucky and getting it from my kingdom, or maybe doing some more giant mole. Otherwise, I can keep doing birdhouse runs, but it really just doesn't seem worth it. Interestingly enough, I wasn't even paying attention. I just kind of assumed that I would have enough feathers from doing those birdhouse runs to get all of my headless arrows done, but I'm like 30k short, which is really surprising. All right, so I think I have enough headless arrows. I think I actually overbought a little bit because I didn't calculate for the experience you actually get for making the headless arrows, but I was getting uh, 460 experience per, but now I'm going to be getting 
2,600 experience for, and also as a 50 point task to actually fletch some. So my fletching rate is going to go way up. Even just making the headless arrows here, I was getting about 500,000 experience per hour in fletching. Now I'm getting well over one and a half million. So pretty big milestone about to come in here as soon as I fletch a couple more of these guys. That will be 92 fletching, which is halfway to 99, but more importantly, 2200 total for an elite lead task. I think that might be the last one before max. There might be one at 2250, but I'm not entirely sure. Oh man, it has been a little while, but if I just fletch a couple more sets of arrows here, that will be 99 fletching completed, 250 points, and one more 99 down. You can see by my ticket stack here, it's up to 450, well I guess just under technically. So if I go ahead and throw that in the bank, you can see that my total is now up to 767. So I've got a little under four hours left to go, a little bit, probably like three and a half hours. I do have some things I can elk, so I'll be doing that. Uh, that's not a small mithril, namely the mithril plate bodies from the foot uh, smithing grind. I do need 2.17 mil in order to, per, or 2.27 mil rather, to purchase the max cape. So that should be able to come from that and maybe some other things I have. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna take a break from agility and move on to something else. So I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and take a quick break for the Dagonoth Kings. I know it's not as efficient as just going and killing dragons directly, but each one of these Dagonoth bones is about two dragon bones and I get them noted there and it'll be a little bit more fun. So I'm gonna do that for just a little while. I don't know how long I'll stay. I don't need any more drops there or anything. Oh, and I figured I'd make some super combat potions now that I have uh, the herbler level for it, which is a 250 point task. Yeah, oh, I messed up my rotation, but so I think that's where I'm gonna end it. But if you look at my inventory, it's pretty good. And this is probably about the third or fourth inventory I've done. I think I've killed about 120 or so total kings. I can kill between 30 and 40 per trip. No problem. It's actually pretty fun. Kind of makes me wish I had better access to some better gear or have, have it actually unlocked, but I don't quite have time for that. So if I drop the bones in here, get an idea of how many bones I have. 278 Dagnoth bones, that is a lot of experience. So I definitely want to go ahead and use up all these bones as my next step. I want to know what the damage is in terms of how much prayer I need to gain, or I mean rather how many bones I need to gain to gain any prayer. So let's go get that done. Alright, finished all the dragon and wyvern bones. As you can see, I'm getting just under 7 million experience an hour from that. So onto the Dagonoth bones, it should be double, so I'm super excited. So funnily enough, I actually ran out of Maritil before I did bones. So I've still got about 50 Dagonoth bones in the bank, which is about 350,000 experience, a little bit more. So if I also add the experience I've yet to claim from the Ardoin Elite Diary, which I have yet to do, I actually still only need about 400 more dragon bones, which isn't too bad. I feel like I can knock that out fairly quickly. So that's something I'll need to be doing as well. Also might do a little bit more Dagonoth Kings. So of course I'll be killing these guys in the Myth Skilled Dungeon. There's two here, very close to a bank, very quick to kill. I can actually come faster than they respawn, so I might consider killing a couple blues while I wait for the respawn timer, though it is some nice downtime as well. It shouldn't take too long to get the 400 bones, I'll probably be doing it here and there on the side. This would be a tough grind to knock it all at once. So there is one thing I need to try uh, as part of this prayer journey, and that is to kill Vorkath. If I am able to kill him effectively, or maybe it's a her, I don't know. If I'm able to kill them effectively, I'll be able to get a good amount of bones for my 99 prayer. However, if I can't, that's also not a big deal. But I should at least give it a try now because it's a task to kill them. Also, I've never done it, and I'd like to use this as an opportunity to learn. I can't find a single guide on how to actually kill it with mage. So we'll go ahead and see how this goes. My relic should help a lot, but I am very squishy. So it actually didn't go too bad. I was down to about 300 health, so a little bit over halfway. I'm definitely missing a lot, so I'm gonna try to upgrade the magic bonus a little bit, probably by swapping out the plate legs. I don't know if I can get much higher, unfortunately. Give it another shot. I also definitely could have gotten hit by a few less attacks. 
Yeah, yeah, Torfin, you're gonna be seeing me a lot, buddy. Though, I was really close that time. Oh, apparently equipping a Zemrakian Spear was a 250 point task I didn't do. But also that kind of teases what I'm about to do next. Alright, Mr. Otto, turn this into a Hosta, please. The Zemrakian Spear. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and give Melee a try. The magic just doesn't quite have the damage output I'm hoping for. I can definitely get a kill with it, but I think I'm gonna bail and try the uh, Hosta before I do that. So this is the melee setup. Obviously my relics give me absolutely no benefit here. I guess I do have like a 10% accuracy and damage increase with melee, but otherwise there's really no benefit. It honestly wasn't too bad, like the mechanics of the boss I understand pretty well already. It's just a matter of uh, outlasting pretty much. So I'll give melee a try. It's basically like doing it in the main game, so it'll be good practice. fast enough by like a tick. <laughs> oh, never mind. All right, managed to kill it. Whew, that is a 100 point task complete as well as a beautiful drop of dragon bones there. And of course the superior dragon bones as well. The main problem I'm seeing is I don't use that many supplies. I don't want the dragon egg. I don't use that many supplies, but without access to um, anti-venoms, I just am going to blow through anti-poisons just trying to stave off the venom, unfortunately. So I don't know how long I'll be able to stay, though that was a three minute kill, which is faster than I, I thought. And I think it's probably around the same speed if I were to use magic versus melee, though the melee makes me a lot tankier. In that same distance or length of fight, I managed to use about the same, uh, I'm sorry, about <laughs> one third of my food rather than all of my food. So. That, uh, that's a pretty significant difference. I think I'll go for a couple more kills, so I don't think I'll do too many. It's it's fun, but there's really no other point tasks I can get from here other than getting some of the really rare drops or alternatively the uh, kill, zone, kill count milestone drops, and I don't really have time for that. But it is fun, and I'm having a good time. So each one of these is two dragon bones, whereas the Dagonath bones are just a little bit less, and I think I can kill the Dagonath kings a little bit faster. So it's not really worth my time at uh, the forecast, unfortunately. I want to know, did I ever wield the Ceridoman Sword? I didn't. There's a 250 point task as well. Ah, oh, I forgot to equip some items. Alright, so it's been a little bit of a interesting weekend because of both the time I've been spending getting ready for my trip coming up. I haven't done a lot of stuff consistently and I've also not been able to record at all. But this is my first update clip of I think around two days. I pretty much did a lot of forecast. You can see here, I, I think I had about 28 uh, superior dragon bones in the bank, so I'm just using them up here, and I'm about to hit 98 prayer, which is going to be a pretty nice milestone. So after I use a couple more bones here, I think one more should do it. There is 98 prayer, which is an elite task, 126 combat, something I've never had on this game before, which is pretty interesting to have, though, you know, slightly sullied by the fact that it's a temporary game mode. So, didn't actually get 99 prayer, but, you know, effectively there, as soon as I can complete that diary, should be pretty good. I've also been doing a little bit of runecrafting as well. I'm up to 93. I want to go straight to 95 and give Wrath Runes a try. I think they'll be slower experience than uh, Lava Runecrafting, but I might enjoy them a little more. And if nothing else, there'll be a slight change of scenery, so that'll be nice. Oh, and go figure. I got a Dragon Fruit Seed drop from Forecast. So I will be able to get that task done. Whenever this seedling grows, I can plant it. And for the record, I did wind up bouncing back to Magic at Forecast. I do think it's a little better with my relics, but just a little. It's kind of annoying how it doesn't actually help that all much there. But with 99 max mage bonus, I think that's the max I can get in my regions, including the required anti-dragon shield. I actually even imbued my Seer's Ring to get there. I was doing pretty well. I could get kills pretty consistently there while praying range. So for now, time for a couple hours of runecrafting. Gotta get all the way up to 95. All right, cool, 95 runecrafting. That means that I can now craft Wrath Runes, which will be a slight change of scenery, though I don't think it'll be any faster than what I'm doing here. Thank you. 
Yeah, unfortunately this is not nearly as good as I thought it was. It's actually even about half the experience per hour of doing the lava runes. So I definitely won't be doing it long term. It is slightly more FK because I get to do this long run instead of constantly clicking to the earth rune altar. The actual method is much more simple than I was thinking as well. It's just as simple as teleporting to the Mist Cape as you the Mist Cape Guild Cape blah, as you just saw. Running through here, going in this little cave here. And then there's the altar, just like any other. I think the problem is I don't have pouches, so it doesn't really... Like, the extra run is very costly in terms of experience per hour. Then I just teleport back to the crafting guild to bank. So, not super interesting, not very viable, unfortunately. So it's still a nice milestone to get knocked out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and take a break from uh, ring crafting for now. I think I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit more fire making done. So, the G is just empty. Like, I know this is the League and it's Christmas and the League's almost over, but man, this is such an eerie sight. Not a single person but me. So fire making is quick as always. Didn't take me very long to get through all of those logs. I'm uh, a little over 95 fire making and I've pretty much run out of U logs right now. I do have enough maples in my bank and in my kingdom to get all the way up to 99. However, I don't think I'm going to do that just yet. I need to do a little bit of AFK time and I was planning on getting 25 million wood cutting experience anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and AFK use for a little while while I edit my video. I sort of should have supposed I was going to miss it. 25 million wood cutting experience achieved and just over a thousand U logs banked from that, which is totally worth it because now I barely even have to touch maples to get up to 99 fire making. I'm still not quite done with what I need to get done though, so I'm going to jump over to Pure Essence and start AFKing that. All right, ready for the next step, and that's gonna be to go ahead and get 99 range. Should be super quick using the same technique that I used on my melees, except with throwing weapons, which have a two tick attack speed, though the max hit will be much lower than my melee yeah, max hit was. Also dug out all of the good thrown weapons that I had in my bank, just some rune and some dragon darts. Apparently you can fletch the darts without desert, you just can't smith the dart tips, so. These are dart tips I got from a dragon if at some point, I think, so I'll be able to use them here. And then when those run out, I have the mithril knives here as well that I smith during my smithing grind. Overall, this should be less experience per hour than with melee because the max hit is lower. However, it is all dumped into one skill instead of three. So I think it should only take about an hour to get to 99. What is this guy doing? <laughs> he was just rock kicking down and now he's standing in the corner. I'm so confused. The world was empty when I got here and I, I just got here, so I... No, oh, okay, bye. Tell me what's going on here. Why was there like five monkeys able to st Like they keep stacking on this spot. How is that possible? I have no idea how. Typically NPCs aren't allowed to walk into each other unless you walk through them first. They just, they keep piling on that one spot. How is that possible? All right. So I think one more cow here and 99 ranged. Ooh, one more, 99 knocked out of the way. Not many more to go. So that actually only took about 45 minutes. It was so fast. Just using the uh, splashing attacks against the monkeys is just an incredible amount of experience. So because of that, I need a little bit more downtime. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one of the few things I have left to do. And that's process my potions that I have in my bank. So I have pretty much all of the secondaries I need. I do need to get more chocolate dust and I need to get more red spider's eggs, but otherwise I have pretty much everything I need to make all these unfinished potions that I have. It's still not gonna be enough for 99. I'm hoping my kingdom will pull me through for that. So this is a very good moment here. If I grab a ticket here, it gives me 240 in my inventory. If I go to the bank and grab the 767 I had, which I guess is seven more than I thought I had, I've got a thousand agility arena tickets. Let's go turn them in. So if my calculations are correct, this should jump me straight from 85 to 99 agility. Make sure my XP drops are on. They are. I wonder what it's going to be. This should be like 9 to 10 million experience by the 1000 experience. Oh, 8.7. So not as quite as much as I thought. And that actually leaves me a little short at 98. 500 point task complete though, <laughs> 85 to 98 agility, which actually completes the 90 base level as well. Oh, that's super exciting. I don't mind that too much. That means that I'll have to do like an hour of arty agility. Oh, and I never updated herb lore too. I do have some more supplies in the bank, but I'm up to 94. I'll keep working that out as I have some more uh, chill time on the side. But next, I think I'm gonna go get up to 95 construction because that's the lowest. I just realized I have the ability to complete the arty elite diary now. So I should do that first, but I need a torstal seed. <laughs> 
and by some miracle, I have a Torstal seed in the bank. If I can spell it, Torstal. Oh, that's so fortunate. <laughs> that would be really hard to have to try to get right now. And I am 100% babysitting this one just to make sure that it's not going to get diseased. It's like a 5% chance. I'll go ahead and check up on it every growth cycle. Oh, and I keep forgetting I have a uh, experience lamp I got from a genie here. I'm just curious to see what that experience shop looks like. 15,000 runecrafting experience. Wouldn't that be nice if that was in the main game? I know this is late in the league, but actually late into my agility ticket grind, I realized that there's actually more points available and it's better points per hour and experience per hour to do the Apatol agility version of this grind. I did enjoy Brimhaven a lot more probably, but just a heads up, probably not the best idea to do the tickets first. It's probably best to do Apatol first. But if I complete this one uh, trek of the Arty agility course, it's also a 250 point task in addition to an elite task in the Arty area. This could be a problem. This is a uh, mini game world for leagues. There might be another one I could try, but there's no one here. <laughs> and I need to complete a game just to get some manta rays. So I'm gonna gonna give it a try. I've got all my swamp pace this time, unlike the last time early on in the league when I didn't have any money to afford swamp paste. I don't know if it's possible to solo though. Extremely stressful, but doable. My net was ripped most of the time, unfortunately, but that should be enough fish that I should have a pretty good shot at having a couple manta rays, which is all I need. I'm realizing I probably should have picked up a cooking cape before this, because it's possible to burn the manta rays, and you have to cook them before leaving Port Cazard. <laughs> so, I mean, with 99 cooking, I'll realistically cook them as long as I've had a, a couple. It was a task to complete that as well for 10 points, which is great. Oh yeah, um, nine manta, or seven manta rays, rather, that should be doable. So if I grab those, and then cook it on the fire, that should hopefully be the... Oh, what else do I need to do? Uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Oh, I guess it's just cooked too. Okay, oof, good to go. Elite test on. All right, it grew, no disease. Go ahead and pick that. And that is the Elite Diary complete, 250 points. All right, turning in the RD Elite Diary and the last diary I'll be able to complete, at least as part of this series. That'll be really handy because I can throw that on prayer for 800,000 prayer experience. Now I just have 376,000 to go, which isn't too bad. I still have some superior dragon dorms in the bank as well, so that should be fine. And then this is also, I think, an upgrade for magic best in slot. I think it's six, the other one was four or maybe five, so a slight upgrade. Definitely nice to have. All right, one more cape rack for the time being is 95 construction. So time to jump back over to Herblore. Want to make sure I can use up all my supplies. All right, one more of these potions, and that's 95 herb lore and 95 base, which is a 500 point master task. Getting max is also another master task, so that is a lot of points for maxing. It's also super exciting. I basically just have a little bit of agility, herb lore, construction, runecrafting, and prayer left. Everything is going to be really straightforward. There's a bit of time for runecrafting, but nothing terrible. The main problem is herb lore. I'm still going to be a ways off 99. I'll update you when I have everything I can process in my bank done. One thing that's worth calling out here is Evento potions. Normally you'd make super energy potions. I unfortunately don't have access to Mortmire fungus other than through salsa cutting or killing the ancient zygomites on Fossil Island, which has a drop of 1 to 2. However, you can add snake grass to these to make fishing potions, and they're only 5 experience less per potion. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Between these two, I don't quite have enough to finish all my potions, but I forgot I got a couple more snake grass seeds through my other adventures. So I'm gonna go plant those and then hopefully that'll be enough. Well, that should definitely be enough. They're like 50 snake grass seeds per, or snake grasses per three seeds or whatever. If you're curious, this is how I'm getting my red spider's eggs, just doing the tower of life here. Super quick can turn about 13 into like 50 in just a few minutes. Oh, I totally forgot I had collected a bunch of herbs already for my kingdom, so I think I should be good. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and get those herbs now. There's technically two more days left until I'm effectively done playing the league, and I could get herbs there, but I don't really have time to wait for them. So I'm just going to collect the resources now, and oh, that's a good number of herbs. That should hopefully be enough to get 99. So I got 89 snip grass from those seeds I planted. Unfortunately, that's not quite enough. I'm going to need a touch more 
Um, actually, almost double that to use the Renars as well. But uh, thankfully, I can collect them pretty quickly off of Waterbirth Island uh, using the home teleport that I made for Dagonoth King. It is incredible how close this wound up being. I did not realize how tight Herbler would be. I'm so close to out of time, and I barely eked it out. 99 Herbler done, but look at these supplies. Like, I am completely dry on everything, even herb seeds. I think I have a couple in here I probably should have grown, but oh, geez. Like, I could not have afforded much more time to get that done. So, next up is runecrafting. Time to go straight to 99 on that. It's going to take a while, but it's really the last long grind I have left. Prayer and agility and fire making shall take less than an hour. Construction, probably about an hour. And that, probably about like three or four hours. Okay, whew. about halfway between uh, the last update and 99. So I'm going to go ahead and take a break from crafting again. I only have probably about two and a half hours left. So I think I'm going to go ahead and go finish agility because it's going to be pretty chill. All right, that's 99 agility knocked out. It was definitely like less than an hour or something. It was super quick. Actually, I can probably check the experience per hour I'm getting, uh, which is 600K, which actually is not as quite as high as I thought, but I have not been focusing at all. And <laughs> you can tell like I'm super lagging right now. Well, I actually probably should have did this first and then bought Amylase. I could have used that for herb lore, but I managed to get 99 there anyway. Check it out. My dragon fruit tree grew. I did not pay to have it protected or anything. So definitely a bit of a gamble there. 250 points for that one. I'm so happy to get that knocked out. Ooh, this is, this is certainly a grind. I'm not enjoying this one, but with this one, that's 98 runecrafting, so the worst levels are out of the way. The one that's supposed to be the most fun is left, but I have to do it again right away, so I don't think it's going to be much more fun than the rest was. But that said, I'm definitely going to take a break here and go wrap up prayer as well as fire making. That would be really quick. Ooh, so happy to have this one knocked out. Another one of the ones that I was sort of dreading, though it was made a lot easier with the uh, access to the uh, achievement diary lamps. So 99 prayer done. Looks like it's on to fire making, which should be a breeze. One small thing is I actually have a couple of magic logs left over from birdhouses, so I can burn these and then maybe I don't have to burn any maples at all. Super happy I went out of my way to AFK these U logs to make sure I had enough to get 99 fire making. This was really fast thanks to that. Definitely one that I don't mind doing at all. It's fast and it's pretty chill, which is nice. So that just leaves two more with a grand total of five total levels left to gain. Both of them, I guess recrafting is probably a little longer than construction, so I don't know which one I'm going to take on first. I might bounce between them a little bit. Ooh, yeah, construction is definitely not my favorite, and it's not made any easier via this method with the mystical cape racks. At least when you're doing the dungeon doors, you can go a lot faster in terms of working with the butler and you not have to quite focus so much on when you need to call him and such. But that's 99 construction knocked out. Finally, runecrafting. Only 350k experience left to go there. That should be less than half an hour. All right. Well, it's finally time. This will be the conclusion of my Trailblazer League journey. Go ahead and click on the altar here. And we are maxed. 2277 total achieved 500 League points and 99 ring crafting as well. Amazing. Let's go ahead and begin the journey to go get that max cape. And here we are, Mac, my old friend. I would like to buy a cape from you. I would like one. Thank you. Oh look, you get a message from the wise old man when you get the cape. That's awesome. From hands. From the RuneScape guide. Amazing. Oof. So, if it wasn't obvious, this is definitely the first time I've maxed in old school RuneScape. Of course, it's a temporary accelerated game mode, so it doesn't really mean as much as maxing in the main game, though I still find it very exciting. Go ahead and equip the cape there. Incredible. Not a task on its own, but obviously you get plenty of points on the way to achieving it. And of course we have to do that emote. Super cool. Love that emote. So of course the first thing I want to check is how long it actually took me to get here. So 
that took me 16 days, 19 hours to get. So that is actually a grand total of 403 hours, which spread out over every day so far. That means that I was playing about six hours per day, a little bit more than, it's definitely more than I was expecting, though a lot of that time was on my phone. As for points, I wound up at 39,910. However, there is one task that I hadn't yet done, which was to fletch the dragon crossbow for the limbs that I had gotten for the, drag the rune dragon kill earlier on. And if I equip that, that is another 250 point task. So that puts me over 40,000, which is makes me pretty happy. It's no dragon tier, but I think for, based on the amount of time I've had to play, I'm really happy that's somewhere in the middle of the rune tier. As of this moment, I was about the 4,000th person to max on the league as well as just under 8,000 rank on League Points, which I'm pretty happy with, so that rank will obviously drop because I won't be able to play the last little bit of the League here. Taking a look at the bank here, honestly nothing special compared to I'm sure a lot of other Trailblazer banks you may have seen. Mine's only worth 218 mil. I think a big part of that is that I didn't have a lot of time to grind out a lot of the more expensive PBM, PBM drops. I'll go ahead and take a quick scroll through here. I don't think there's anything super interesting in here. Some notable drops like the Armadillo Crossbow and the Gilded that I got. Really not that interesting though. Uh, some uh, DK Uniques that I was able to stack up. Otherwise it's just skilling supplies because Max became my primary focus. The Clue Tab is looking fairly interesting, but I am a little disappointed that I won't necessarily have time to complete any more clues. Oh, and, and here's the rest. I realize I cut that off a little quick. Honestly, nothing super fancy. And yeah, in regards to clues, you can see the boxes I was able to stack up since the last clue opening. I was really hoping I would have time to do one more clue opening video as part of this series after maxing, but it's just not going to happen. It would take me probably a day or two to complete all these clues and then open the caskets. So unfortunately, I won't have time for that. And of course, speaking more generally, I was also hoping to do at least one more episode as well, just to clean up any easy tasks that I could do within a short amount of time, which I will probably still do just off camera because I'm not going to be in a position where I'm able to consistently record. So this is definitely where we part ways. The end of this Trailblazer journey. I definitely had a absolute blast in this league. I hope you did as well and I hope you've enjoyed joining me along for my progress. I hope it was interesting. I kind of tried to shake up the meta a little bit with my relic and area picks and try different strategies that maybe other people hadn't had an opportunity to try. I am immensely happy with what I was able to accomplish in the league and I, I hope you had a good time too. All that said, in about a week there will be one more Trailblazer related video going up on the channel and that will be a sort of retrospective uh, video reviewing the league generally, speaking to not just my experience but the experience I was seeing other people have as well. So that'll be going up in about a week, so you can look forward to that. Other than that, I'm going to be going on an extended hiatus, though I have a series in the works that I'm very excited for. It will be a Snowflake Iron Man that I think will be pretty unique and pretty fun. So look forward to that probably around mid to late spring. That's going to be it for me, though. Seriously, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the series, definitely give the video a like and consider subscribing to the channel. It would mean a lot to me. And also, I hope you have a good 2021. Take care, everyone.